Hello and welcome to another episode of The Wave, the wonderful Alberni Valley experience. At this point, I'd like to acknowledge that we are coming to you from the unceded territories of the Hoopacheset and the Tishot peoples here in Port Alberni, where we have uh, a wonderful time, a wonderful Alberni Valley experience. Today, I am going to be interviewing a very a uh, fun friend that I met uh, at the, uh, the first time I met her was at the Alberni Words on Fire, Alberni Valley Words on Fire. And she did uh, this comedy uh, act, a comedy skit, and I was totally blown away. And uh, of course, we became friends because we are neighbors here in the wonderful Alberni Valley. I would like to introduce her to you now. With us today is the lovely, pretty, charming, and funny, and witty, and I can't run out of adjectives. I will not run out of that. She says, Ms. Laurie Blakely. Hi, Laurie. Thank you for being on the show. Hi, John. Great to be here. Thanks for so inviting funny. me. <laughs> it's so funny when we were um, trying to uh, schedule your interview, we, saw, we had sort of like a miscommunication. I really thought I had you for last Wednesday <laughs> at 11 in the morning. Oh, by the way, happy Canada Day to everyone. Yes, everybody. happy Canada Day. This uh, video is not going to be aired on Canada Day, but it was done on Canada Day. That's why Laurie's wearing red. I'm wearing a bit of red myself. <laughs> okay, let's get right into it. How the uh, wonderful Alberni Valley experience of Ms. Laurie Blakely started. You've been here for four years now. Yes, just about four. Mm -hmm. You were born in Vancouver, grew up in Richmond. Uh, that, must, that must have been like some time ago, right? <laughs> when, well uh, done. It wasn't invaded yet by the Asians. <laughs> I'm not going to say specifically what Asians, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it, it was long enough ago that when you drove down Westminster Highway, you would have to pause twice a day, uh, the traffic, because the Holt cows were changing pastures and going back to the barn. <laughs> oh, so, my, really? Yeah, that's how long ago it was. <laughs> Okay, so thank God that's behind you now. <laughs> there are no cows here. There's only deer, right? And bear here in Port Albert. <laughs> yes. They do not, the bear don't cross the road, but the deer do. <laughs> so uh, let's get into it. So you moved to Port Alberta in 2016. It was about four years ago. And uh, before that, you were living in Salt Springs. Yes, that's right. Uh, from we were on, landed on Salt Spring in 2001 mm -hmm. and uh, raised our kids there. Great place to live and raise kids. Yeah, of course. But here's even greater. But when, did you, when you moved here, were your kids all grown already? Yes, they were. Okay, I see. I see. Anyway, what attracted you to Port Alberni? Like, what made you want to come and live here in the wonderful Alberni Valley? Aside well, from the fact I, that it is wonderful. <laughs> yes. Um, I think really the nature and the amenities together. Uh, Salt Spring, um, it's improved, I guess you could say, in many respects, but it's quite limited there. I mean, it's the amenities are basically outdoor and anything you need beyond what's available in a local store, it means a ferry ride. So your life, especially raising kids on Salt Spring, is really um, determined by ferry schedules. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, so the great part here is like, oh, I could just get in my car and go somewhere and not have to consult a ferry schedule. <laughs> and you can walk most of the time. Like, you know, everything's just like either walking distance or a five minute drive or something like that. If you need to exercise, you can walk to the bank and walk to the coffee shop. Depending on where you live, though. <laughs> yes. Well, I was very impressed when the realtor took me around and she was like, this is our arts district. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? Port Alberni has an arts district? And yes, we do. <laughs> I know. And Roland Arts Center. I was very impressed by that. So another reason. That and, of course, the very affordable um, housing prices. So. Okay, so on the onset, what was your first, have you been to Port Alberni before you started looking around? Only passing through on my way to Tofino, like. Of course. So many other thousands <laughs> of people. 
you and a, a million others passing going yeah. to Tofino and some people even deny like I didn't go to Portal Bernie. What do you mean? If you went to Tofino, you must have passed through Portal Bernie. <laughs> and then they say, No, I didn't take that route. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you flew. Route. But then again, prior to coming to Portal Bernie or coming to Portal Bernie, have you heard good things or bad things? Of course you've heard both, I guess. So what are the bad things you've heard? I'm curious about that first. Did you hear any bad things? Yes, absolutely. I did. Yes, those magazine articles that posted us as one of the worst places to live in the country. Yes, I heard those. And what do you think about that? Did that deter you in some way like, oh, maybe I should not live in Portal Burning? Well, I thought long and hard about it. However, everywhere has problems. Yeah. That's and so I, true. And one of the things I say is coming from Salt Spring is um, we see less of the problems um, on Salt Spring only because we have more trees on Salt Spring. <laughs> <laughs> it's simply more hidden. Oh, okay. Well, I've never been to Salt Springs. Maybe that's going to be on my uh, to-do list, not my bucket list, but my to-do list one of these days. I will go to Salt Springs. So you came to Port Alberni and you told me that you slowly moved <laughs> because that seems to be the pace of your uh, of your life. You you move slowly, baby steps. I mean, as long as it's forward, speed doesn't really matter as long as you're moving forward, right? Yes, definitely forward, forward in a slow, yeah. <laughs> slow Slower. and relaxed space where you can take in every moment as life is meant to be. <laughs> okay, so what are the good things that you don't have to hear about it because you're already living here? What are the good things that you liked and experienced here in Portal Burning? Well, you did say uh -huh. the art center, the arts district, of course, the low prices. That's the number one thing in most of my interviews. What else? Well, I got involved with Art Rave, the community art group, and that has been a fabulous um, venue for me for meeting people and getting together to do community art projects. We built um, a large uh, fish luminary that's hanging at Shars. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was a fabulous project. Um, and then we made a pair of wings painted on canvas. Uh, the next year, I guess, um, so that people can stand in front of the wings and have their picture taken. And uh, the wings are filled with images of um, iconic things from the Alberni Valley. So fish and fish boats and mountains and the theater. Yeah. So. Well, I didn't realize that. I did have my picture taken in front of those wings. And it's, well, it was posted all over Facebook during, um, I think, two, three years ago. And I do have a picture of Luma, because I do know of that uh, luminary uh, artwork that you did that's, that's lying in, a, that's hanging in Charles Landing. It is a uh, very beautiful piece, I must say. <laughs> but I didn't realize that the wings were, had all the symbols and uh, images built into it. That is a wonderful yes. thing. So then you also got involved with the Alberni uh, Words on Fire. Was it Alberni Words on Fire first or Art Rave first? Um, I think I started coming to Words on Fire first at Shars. Okay. I, I've spent so much time at Shars. I, I think... I think that's where I met you. Yes, of course. Yeah. I think all of my <laughs> all of my friendships, even with my neighbors, have stemmed um, from meeting at Charles Landing. Yeah, and yeah. it's just too bad that now um, because of COVID we can't go to Shars anymore. <laughs> yes. What we do our Zoom meetings by uh, the Words and Fire thing now. I mean the Words and Fire by a Zoom meeting now. So yeah, and that's where I met you for the first time. And uh, you did this <clears throat> comedic skit. Your comedic styling was just so unique and so impressive. You got up there and you made the audience choose for you to read a uh, oven toaster manual or a curling iron manual. And of course, curling iron 
tops, <laughs> oven toaster anytime. So it was unanimous that you read from your curling iron manual. And that's been a, that has been the first time I've heard of such a thing like you read, you read it like seductively and suggestively. <laughs> and um, unfortunately we couldn't find the curling iron manual for this interview, but you have something else? Yes, I, um, <clears throat> I found a recipe book. Okay. So it is um, an old recipe book that came along with a crockery cooker from the <laughs> okay, you're cracking me up. Seventies from the seventies. So let's see. I should have decided which. Um, recipe I was going to go with. I think I saw one here for sorry I'm taking a moment okay. here. Oh here we go. Okay. Boiled tongue. <laughs> Oil tongue. <clears throat> okay. Boiled tongue. Take it away, Miss Laurie. One beef tongue fresh or smoked, two tablespoons salt, one and a half cups water, six peppercorns, juice of two lemons or two onions quartered, wash tongue, thoroughly and place in crockery cooker. Add all ingredients, cover and set on medium. Cook overnight or for about seven to nine hours. <laughs> but it gives you no other instruction on how you would want to eat this tongue or if you would eat this tongue. <laughs> And what you would have it with. It is certainly not a recipe I am familiar with at all. Have you have you had boiled tongue before, John? I never have. Uh, yeah, I have, but it wasn't really, I think it's boiled and it was marinated or uh, seasoned or some kind of casserole thing. Because in uh, there is this Filipino dish, and I think it's inspired by the Spanish. Uh, it's called lengua estofado. Or lang lengua means language or tongue. So lengua uh, is uh, it's it's delicious. It's like a it's like a steak. They prepare it like a steak. It is soft and <laughs> but good choice for a tongue recipe. I was hoping a recipe that had not seen it. But anyway. oh. <laughs> you're so bad. You're so bad. <laughs> okay. Well, you need to tilt your camera a little down because your chin is being cut off. There, perfect. Okay, now let's continue with the interview. Um, you've been living in Port Alberni for four years now. So um, what would you like to see more of here in Port Alberni? Like some development, some ideas you might want to develop here in Port Alberni? Ah, that is an excellent question. Um, I have been very enheartened to attend several rallies. Um, the last one was um, the Black Lives Matter in support of Black Lives Matter and the, the family of Chantelle Moore, um, the young woman from Tlopet that was killed in, I think, New Brunswick maybe last month. Mm -hmm. um, so I would love to see um, more happening around with the Indigenous Peoples, First Nations, and Reconciliation. Um, that It makes me really happy when I see people coming together and finding our commonalities. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is a little bit of a crazy idea. It's along the line of the arts. So this is something, if anyone's interested, they could can Google. In the States, there is something called Meow Wolf, and it's an artist collective in Santa Fe. And they're about to open several different locations, I think Vegas and I've forgotten where else. 
and they have these amazing um, installations of art, like a full on experience. So one I think in Santa Fe is called the House of Etern Eternal Return or something. Anyway, if you Google Meow Wolf, I think something like that here would be fantastic. Oh, Just that's an, great. an immersive arts experience, yeah. Yeah, I know uh, the the people who are involved in the arts here are just amazing people. I mean, I just went to a gallery. Have you been to the Ashtick Gallery? Like going to Tofino, there's this Ashtick Gallery there. And I'm interviewing the owner and the artist there. His name is Gordon Dick. And, oh, he's amazing. The wood carvings that he does are amazing, amazing uh, indigenous arts. And they were amazing pieces. And I got, uh, he told me of different kinds of wood that he's working in. And it's the first time I heard something called elevated pine it's a more dense kind of wood it's a, he called it elevated pine it's not cedar it's not red cedar but it was elevated pine and it was very interesting and yeah ah. this, this valley is teeming with artists from all over and different mediums like sculptors and uh painting and uh mixed media and this and that and so it's just amazing that and i'm so glad that you're uh so you're an artist yourself? Like what medium do you do? So I, yeah. yes, uh, uh, assemblage. So it's sculpture from junk. So things that other people would throw in the garbage. <laughs> oh, I will okay. retrieve and, um, and construct it into, into a piece of art. So yeah. I That's should have amazing. Had, I should have had a piece ready to show, but I don't. So. Okay. Yeah. Do you have uh, like an Instagram account that people can look at or your Facebook page where you show your... Um, on Facebook, actually, I have some of my, my art pieces uh, photographed there. And um, yes, Instagram is something that I finally decided that I would join. And yeah, then I, it told me that it already had my email account in use. And uh, so anyways, that is a work in progress. We, <laughs> only I could have trouble getting onto Instagram, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure many other people do. Is so, your email a hotmail? <laughs> <laughs> no, your email, uh, the email you gave me was, uh, was a Gmail, wasn't it? Uh, no, it's an iCloud account. Oh, an iCloud, oh, that's pretty modern. <laughs> You can tell a person's age nowadays with their email address. Yes. Hotmail. Oh, okay. They're up like 50 and up. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> or, or they haven't caught up yet because it's either Gmail or iCloud or something else. <laughs> now, I, I'm curious. I always ask this in my um, interviews. What would you say to people who say bad things or negative things about Port Alberni? Ah, well, that is back to, you know, that every city has its problems. Mm -hmm. We just, ha we just have wider streets here. So it becomes <laughs> more apparent. <laughs> yeah, so I would say you have to come. Who's dissing Port Alberni. Like you're here and they're visiting. Oh, I heard Port Alberni is this and Port Alberni is that. Oh, the killers came from Port Alberni. Did you, did you follow that story? My God. Yes, that's <laughs> so get sad of mentioning that the killers came from Port Alberni. Well, yes. they weren't in Port Alberni, were they, when they were killing? <laughs> That's part of our tourism strategy. We send our killers out of Port Alberni. <laughs> <laughs> it might be too soon. It might be too soon for, for that dog. <laughs> yes, that was a very tragic story. No, I think definitely Port Alberni is undersold. I mean, we have spectacular scenery and um, amazing restaurants, great citizens. So, um, yes. And we have our problems just like every city. Oh, definitely, so. definitely. I mean, that's the part I love about Port Alberni is the nature, like you said, the house price, very good, of course. But best of all for me, 
it's like you said the citizens the community the commu- the people here are just so wonderful of course you'll see you know here and there but that's just like few and far between but by and large this is a wonderful community to to live in and have relationships in and have friends in and it's just so wonderful to be here in Port Alberta. Yeah. I know the first year I was here, I was particularly impressed with various um, events for the community. For Christmas time, they have the big sail past of all the decorated boats and free roasted chestnuts and hot dogs and hot chocolate for the kids, the music, like an amazing, amazing event. Same with the same kinds of events they have. Um, Canada Day and the yeah, Salmon Canada Festival Day. and Halloween. Just amazing. The fall fair. Event. Yes. The fall fair, yeah. the, uh, the toy run. All events that are so wonderful. We had the Ty Watson Gala. Have you ever been to the Ty Watson Gala? I have, yes. The first year I was here, I went. And is it just glamorous, like you're going to the Oscars or something? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. We need more events like that. Actually, that would be something that you and I could maybe collaborate on because Oh yeah, for sure. I love to get dressed up. Oh, definitely. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. We need more galas. Before oh. COVID, I would post a uh, a picture of my new outfit every week or actually every other day, but now after COVID, <laughs> Forget it. There's no reason to dress up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit heartbreaking, isn't it? It is. It is. But anyway, maybe soon, someday soon, or sooner than later, we can get back to a little bit of normal. But I don't think we're ever going to go back to the, you know, the past normal. It has to. It, things have to change, I suppose. I did hear once of a guy, Paul Feig, who's in comedy and television production and whatnot, maybe films too. And he does like an online Zoom, like a cocktail party. Oh, cool. As a fundraiser. Maybe we should start doing something like that where we can have our online gala, a Zoom gala, and we can all dress up in our finery and well, connect I, uh... that way. I have interviewed Teresa Ludvigson at the Alberni Hospice Society, and they are looking into having a virtual gala for uh, Ty Watson. They're working on it. And I'm sure there are, you know, some people there are kind of like outdated, forgive me for saying that, but there are. <laughs> there, are uh, there are people here who are very active and very influential to this day, but they're kind of behind the times. So there has to be... If that's one thing I want to see happen here in Port Alberni, it's like the meaning of the old and the new and coming to a common ground and, you know, mm-hmm. working together instead of against each other. Because <laughs> it's hard. Uh, the new people have these ideas, like you and me, we have new ideas. But the old folks are like stuck in the old way. Oh, it was better in the old days. They just stayed the way it is. Uh, but it can't be. There has to be change, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. We need always to progress forward. Yeah, it may be slow, but as long as it's forward, like I was saying. Okay. Well, actually, I, uh, as far as people are concerned saying negative things about Port Alberni, I would also like to thank them because it keeps people away. So at least our little paradise is kept intact. <laughs> <laughs> so we, be, we have the, uh, the opportunity or the luxury of being selective of people coming into Port Alberni. <laughs> Oh, I met a, a, a guy yesterday who just moved into the valley. And then he's another artist. He's another sculptor. Oh, okay. And he said, did I make the right choice? I said, well, you'll find out. And he will. And I'm sure he will have a wonderful Bernie Valley experience. <laughs> and uh, do you have anything to share as far as, like, work you've done? Have you been working on a book or something? Because you do also dabble in writing, right? I do most of my writing is um around comedy so okay. writing writing things i'm going to perform primarily um yes i've been uh doing little crafty things and working on costume pieces and um i was just uh in school in france from october to march i was at a theater school finally oh, wow. it me all my life so and uh 
yeah. So I'm hoping to get back there next year and do some more studying. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. So you, you took a course on theater, writing theater stuff? It, it's, um, so this, it's a theater school. It's called Ecole Philippe Gaulier. Mm -hmm. um, and the focus is on clown. Although okay. it's not, yeah, although it's not exclusively clown. So okay. I was really enjoying that. So every, every week we would, uh, apart from our regular classes, we get into groups and yes, write and perform something every Friday. So oh, it was wow. very challenging, but a lot of fun. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm sure we're gonna have a, a wonderful time seeing uh, your upcoming work. And I will talk to you about something after this interview. I, a light bulb just went on in my head. So now let's okay. get into our um, rapid fire questions in closing of the interview. Are you ready? I know I was supposed uh -oh. to give you the questions, but I forgot to bring you. Anyway, just say the first thing that comes to mind and oh, no. uh, share with us. Okay, living in Portland, Bernie makes me feel like. Ah, a new adventure every day. Oh, wow, that's a beautiful answer. Okay, number two. The people in Port Alberni are? So varied. Okay, that's a good answer. Number three, in a word or a phrase, I would describe Port Alberni as? Ah, uh, let's see. I guess paradoxical. Oh, that's a new word. I should look it up <laughs> or I will ask Google. <laughs> now I know what paradoxical means, okay. I, I think I, I heard paradoxical in one of my ESL classes. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, number four, I believe, is when people ask, oh, here, in a word or phrase, I would describe Port Alberni as? Uh, very friendly, spectacularly beautiful, oh, and full wow. of artists. That, there you go. Spectacularly beautiful. Did you hear that, folks? That is true. That is no exaggeration at all. Okay, when people ask me what it is like to live in Port Alberni, I say... Ah, it's exactly what I needed. Oh, wow. Yes, of course. And what exactly did you need? <laughs> <laughs> Peace and quiet, serenity. I get a mix of that in my neighborhood. Oh, there you go. An absolute mix. Some <laughs> of my neighbors play quite loud music, and it's fabulous. I love it. I dance to it. <laughs> so oh, there it's like you a go. Community block party. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the only way to do it now that you can't go to the bars and the clubs anymore. So you have a street that's party right. and maintain social distance, right? <laughs> okay. Next question. Uh, the first three places I would take my visitors visiting for a few days in Port Alberni, I would take them to where? To the Harbor Key, okay. Hole in the Wall, and of Char's course. Landing. Okay, there you go. Char's Landing. I miss Char's Landing. Yes. All right, final question. Complete this sentence, darling. I love living in Port Alberni because... Ha! <sighs> It just affords me um, a great lifestyle. I've made so many wonderful friends. And um, yeah. No, that's wonderful. I love it here. Though, there you go. It affords her a wonderful lifestyle, just as it has me. Thank you, Laurie, for being on my show, on our Thank show. You. The wonderful Alberni Valley experience shall continue for me and for Laurie. But in the meantime, we have to say goodbye for now. So we will catch you next time on The Wave. <gasps>